Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance YouTube channel. Some of you say in comments underneath the video, I feel like I never left. Well, that's the goal, supply you with a lot of great content and thank you for being part of it and keeping watching. I have a special treat for you here today. You will say, oh what, 2001 Toyota Sienna XLE, what is so special about it? Well, look at the condition. This person bought it recently, it's in California and moved within the California and it has only 41,000 miles. So it's absolute super survival vehicle. Look that cleanliness. This is not because it was detail. Detail, look even on the block and everything. This is absolutely incredible, don't you think? The owner before she bought it, she was questioning it. She said, oh, hopefully somebody didn't just roll the odometer. And especially also when you see the sun damage, the paint in certain areas, it's peeling off. So you immediately become suspicious. But if you look with me on the pedals, on the interior, on everything what is on this vehicle, it just looks absolutely brand new. So regarding to the paperwork, before she bought it, she had it inspected elsewhere. She put only roughly 500 miles and bang, check engine light is on. And I have it ready for you. Quick scan with the simple little reader. And this is what we've got. So there is a check engine light on. And this is the code P1155. And this code means that the air fuel sensor, heater circuit, which is built in that sensor, failed or it's showing malfunction. Most likely that heater circuit has a open, it burned and the computer, the ECM, is sending this. So that's a bad news. The good news is the location. This one is not very hard to reach. It's the other way. Let me show you. Will it be not great if today, this time, the sensor was very easy to get to, to reach it, unhook the connector and so on? And yes, this person is lucky, believe it or not, it's actually right here and the wiring connector, it's right there. Let's go and see if the computer will even let us erase that or it will co come immediately back as so-called hard code. So I will try to erase it. Erase was successful. I still have that ignition on, so now you can see there are no codes. Let's start it up and see if the ECM will say it's still there. So you can see the code is back. We can rescan everything. Excuse me. And see if it's immediately coming back. I already see the check engine light and look it's immediately back and this is what I expected if the heating wire that heater inside of this sensor is burnt that means the ECM can scan that immediately and it will trigger the check engine light and what should be the proper diagnostics? Well, we have to always check that this connector, which is down there, it's correctly hooked. Correct? That is the first thing. If it wasn't, or the wire was eaten by the mice or rats or something, obviously the sensor will be not able to communicate with ECM. And it will also show that code. 
Also, since the parts are so expensive and you want to avoid any costly mistakes, always check if your fuses on that vehicle have AF air fuel sensor heater fuse. And look here, right here, it's 25 amp hidden right there. So always make sure that that fuse is not blown and causing that check engine light. I did, of course, and the fuse is perfect. But in most cases, statistically speaking, it's the sensor itself and the heating element which is inside. There could be problem with ECM. That's a pure theory. But in a real world, if you are owning vehicle like that, you can basically go order the new sensor, high quality sensor, not some cheapo, replace it, and 99% of the time you will erase the code and everything will be perfect. You will have no check engine light and any problems. Why? Because these sensors doesn't last forever. I read somewhere actually that they were designed roughly for 60,000 miles or so. We are lucky that they last longer normally, but this is very common on Toyotas. When I was working at the dealer, I was surprised how often we were replacing those sensors. To replace it, I highly recommend to stick with the Denso. That's a Japanese maker, most likely. This one was made by Denso. I just checked the price from aftermarket supplier and unfortunately it's extremely expensive. It's almost $200. So these are the rare moments when you will actually go ahead and call the Toyota dealer parts guy and let's go compare the prices. And Toyota dealer didn't disappoint it. Their price for the same sensor with the tax it's almost 300 bucks. So the prices are relatively high. Let's disconnect <coughs> that wiring connector and make sure that that heater circuit is actually burnt and there's no continuity in it. To measure correctly that sensor might be a little bit confusing. So, in general, Toyota, where is that top clip? Again, I will zoom it a little bit for you. So, to measure the sensor, I have the connector here. We said it will be on the top, in our case black and black. And I have an open, so there's no connection between the lines. Now you see it changes to the zeros. So I need to find here somewhere between 11 and 16 ohms. I'm touching both of these connectors and I have open. So there is not continuity and that's why that check engine light was basically immediately back. This sensor has to be replaced. And you might hear my door opening. And that was the delivery guy. He came really quickly. He surprised me. So we have a new replacement Denso sensor right here. And let's immediately see what will be the numbers on the brand new unit. Have to be careful with it. I don't want to bang it around. But this seems to be absolutely identical unit like the one we have removed. Maybe it was replaced already in the past. I'm not sure. But this is Japanese part. I fully trust these. And let's go and see. Again, I don't want to be hitting anything with it. Maybe I should leave it in the bag like this in the box. And let's measure and confirm that we are correct. These two contacts multimeter is back set to the resistance it's in open let's see if we are correct today 
and what will be resistance of the brand new sensor. I'm finally touching those. Let me grab it differently. I'm trying everything for you for the camera, which makes me to work difficult. But right now we should get the ohms. And at the temperature here, which is probably, I don't know what's the day here in California, we have 55 Fahrenheit, that's probably here in the, in the shop. And we can see there is continuity between these two. I'm not sure how perfectly you saw it, but it was 1.7 ohms. I have remeasured it one more time on the bench, not trying just crookedly stand there in front of the camcorder. It was these two top connectors, so right there on the top, on each side, and it was 1.7. 0.9 ohms. So I'm excited. The part was approved and the replacement. I can show you how to replace it right now. I believe it was 22 millimeter wrench and I believe it was funny that it barely cleared in the past but it did clear this connector so even despite the fact you know this whole thing is bad and you could just really quickly cut it off you don't have to, you can take that 22 millimeter and go all the way on it. It perfectly fit. Hopefully you can see it nicely. And I should be able to remove it. You can also, you might own oxygen sensor tool, which I should probably show you which basically looks like this. You can buy it again in any aftermarket store and it will perfectly fit on it. But I want to show the other way. This is a little bit feels like a cheating because this vehicle has only 40,000 miles. We already talked about it. It's incredible. And therefore the oxygen sensor, it's not rusted in and it's not a nightmare to remove it. We will prevent that from happening when we will be installing the new one in just a second. I will show it. So look, here is the old one. It's obviously dirty here. That's from the exhaust. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is original Toyota or it was already once replaced. I don't know. So that was in the package. You will just cut right here with your shears or whatever you will use and you will squeeze very little amount of this copper based entices on the threads and that will prevent this sensor from seizing in that exhaust manifold carefully put it on the thread that's all what it's needed that will help prevent the seizing. Here you can see the opening where the sensor belongs. I believe the Toyota repair manuals, the factory manuals say 20 Newton meters torque. I don't know how you're supposed to use torque wrench in these tight spots with the wire and so on but whatever now you know the numbers which i read somewhere i will just use the common sense uh, we need to squeeze that crush washer which is there for a perfect seal i remember what i needed to use to remove it so of course you don't want to destroy the sensor right there and it's so expensive but I totally feel that I put something like that 20 newton meters, maybe tiny bit more. Now I will guide that wire underneath that coolant pipe and I'm heading towards to that connector which is hidden down here. So you clearly remember that we 
did erase it, but it came back immediately. It's present. So we have to start with erasing it. We don't want to give it to the customer with a check engine light on. That will be not okay. Again, using the simple reader. Let's see what will happen. So it's there. We will erase it. It says it was successful. It's gone. But look, last time when we did this, the light came back within like 15 seconds or less. So I will just go for another scan, but I'm not erasing. You can trust me. I'm not trying to trick you. And I can tell you this will not come back because we did a good job. We not only discovered the code, we understood what the code meant. We did our diagnosis, replaced it with the brand new high quality denso part and that check engine light will be not back. I guarantee that. We will have a new happy customer and I'm assuming they will keep coming back when they will need a more service in the future. We can refresh. But I know already it's fixed. You know it too. We did a good job together today. The owner requested to replace the windshield wipers, so I better do it quick. And I would love to film more for you about this week or some other interesting stuff. But her friend actually is waiting. He's walking around. We have really nice place here. He's waiting for it. So I cannot film this time more. I just have to finish it. And when it will come back and we will see something interesting about this gen of Sienna, we will keep filming some other day. So thank you for watching. Thank you for bringing me good luck. And we did a nice and correct diagnosis and we subscribe. Have always more coming your way soon. See you later, my friend.